you know, if you can name it, you can tame it. Yeah, I, I was just tired of all the pressure and the expectations in their lives. Now it has become exaggerated because of COVID-19. And we bring, you know, the whole structure into an open space to have people move around and discover the collective game that they've been playing. The body remembers what the mind forgets. I can create another game that helps me win now. Hello, welcome to Action Explorations. My name is Anna Bobikova. Our topic today is the game plan life coaching. And my guest today is Joshua Lee. Hi, Joshua. Hey, Anna, how are you? New online education alert. If you're studying psychodrama and would like to learn it online with pre-recorded video formats, please check out actionexplorations.education. Watch for detailed announcement at the end of this video. How do you do intervention? I have a process that I've sort of whittled down, Anna, to uh, an acronym called All In. A L L dash I N. All In. And it means to analyze or assess the current game being played, to uh, label it, because it's important to, if you can label, you know, if you can name it, you can tame it. And then we look at leveraging the players or the clients' strengths and resources mm -hmm. to, again, go after and overcome their opponents in life. Sometimes people, Anna, they just say, wow, I am my own worst opponent. So, and we have to explore that because that can mean anything. Yeah. And oftentimes mm -hmm. it comes out to, I am my worst critic. I am a yeah. saboteur. You know, I yes. procrastinate, all those things, mm -hmm, those habitual mm -hmm. uh, habits that they can't seem to get off the hamster wheel about, right? So we analyze the game, we label it, we leverage resources and strengths, and then we integrate the new learning into their current, you know, image of themselves, their, their current way they're seeing this issue that has brought them to me in the first place. And then we have to name it, right? Name the mm -hmm. new game. And, and I have to tell you some, these people come up with some very creative games. There was a, a minister who I was working with. She played the, she got present to playing the yes, God, but game, right? <laughs> it's like, yes, God, I hear you. But, right, and every year she got closer to retirement, she postponed it because she was playing this game of, yes, I know I need to go into full-time ministry, but God, but, you know. Uh -huh. um, there's another one of can't get it right game. And the more levity, and uh, the more fun and play that you can bring to name of these games, the more you can release its grip on you, right? Because it's yeah. like, oh. I'm just playing this game. Created that game. Guess what? I can create another game that helps me win now. All I got to do is is name it and do the actions, the thinking, and the emotions that go into that game and take away the energy from the old game that had them in a rut, had them on a hamster wheel, and total disappointment and frustration. Right, so they can play this new and, and win this new game. Uh, last one I'll share with you is count me in. No, really, don't count me in. Name that game that they realized and discovered that they were playing with their family. Adam Blattner in his book, uh, The Art of Play, um, mm -hmm. teaching adults to reclaim their spontaneity, talks about bringing fun and play to altering and, and solving their problems, bringing fun and play. Uh, as adults, we sort of lose that, right? So yeah. we, uh, within the game plan coaching model, we bring a lot of the, we move a lot, we uh, help them because the body remembers what the mind forgets. And so 
we just have fun and build strengths around the things that are, are working. Were you inspired also creating this model? Did you consider also the work of Eric Byrne? Transactional analysis. Yeah, yeah. I um, didn't know about TA when I created uh -huh. it. Other people have sort of mentioned, wow, this sounds like transactional analysis. And yes, right, we have our personas. We have, yes. um, as Jung talked about, we have these masks that we wear, mm -hmm, but underneath mm -hmm. is, is something different. We sometimes cast off and suppress parts of ourselves that sort of pop up. And, and that's, you know, part of how, what keeps people on the hamster wheel. You know, what keeps that opponent alive and, and well in their lives is uh, those so-called shadow parts of self. Yes. We have people to uncover. I'm working yeah. with a young uh, college student and he was a star football player in high school and he chose and he wanted to, he, you know, from a very young age could see himself playing in the National Football League. But as he got older and more attention started coming to him and even uh, when he messed up, he says, you know, those people are being fake and phony because they no longer want to be his friend, right? So Tom comes to select a college. He actually chooses a college that, that has no football program. Uh... And his parents are left wondering, like, what, you know, what's going on? Uh-huh. And so within four to six weeks of working with this young man, he sort of coughed up the fur ball and said, yeah, I, I was just tired of all the pressure and the expectations, but he never wow. communicated that to his parents. So he discovered that within his, the game he was playing was not really, uh -huh. somewhat. When he, when he labeled that game, there was so much freedom that came about. Could you please say more where, if people are interested, what yeah. they can do with you? First, I want to say, you know, the game plan tends to be a misnomer sometimes because when people hear the game plan and they sort of see the, the image of a football field or a basketball court, they tend to think that it's just for men and young men. And that's really not the case. It's for yeah. anyone who's interested in understanding how they've gotten into the situation they've gotten into, which causes them to look for someone like me as a life coach. I call that a game because again, right. it's, you know, your, your thoughts and feelings that sort of give you the actions you take or don't take. Yes. And whenever there's a gap in performance where you ideally want to be and where you are currently operating, I call that a gap in performance. And uh -huh. it's for anyone, you know, in terms of who want happiness in their lives, I assume that's everybody mm -hmm. who want to elevate their performance in other games they're playing in life, whether mm -hmm. it's being a, a father, a good father to, you know, a teenager who tends to be uh, challenging, right? Yeah. Who wants to increase productivity at work. And so mm -hmm. wherever there's a, a gap in performance, that's where we usher and harness all the resources within and strengths within to overcome those what I call opponents, right? Mm -hmm. So I have individual sessions with people from all uh -huh. over the country. Now we're in the age of, you know, online, Zoom, yeah. uh, and so forth. And I also have men's groups where men from, and we started with men because of, in my experience, um, the wheels have to be falling off their lives in order for them to uh -huh. come to see me. Oh, that's fantastic. You do the eat and zoom, right? Uh -huh. And, and I want to uh, mm -hmm. just give a, a shout out to the Kate Hudgens and the therapeutic spiral model, because it has been a great learning. I'm, I'm under her tutelage right now to learn about the therapeutic spiral model, which has informed, allowed me to be trauma informed with this model, yeah. right? And a year or so ago, the things that men in particular would just sort of um, suffer with in their lives now has become exaggerated because of COVID-19. So we're talking about loss of employment, 
loss of connections with people, you know, just those things we tend to take for granted. Now, those are the reasons why people are coming in to see me. I have great news, Anna, that in the spring of this year, I will be launching the game plan board game. It is, uh -huh. will be available for sale in the spring. And what it, it sort of um, allows people to self-coach, right? And get insights uh -huh. into their own behaviors even before they come and see me, right? And when they come oh. see me, you know, the game plan uh, does have a paper and pencil version, as I call it. Uh -huh. And then it also has an experiential piece that we apply and reinforce the, the concepts within. So I'm very excited about that. I can play it individually or I need a group of people to play. It's it. actually both and. You, you can play it as an individual. What I realized <laughs> is that I had all the elements to it already as I was creating it, right? And I would create uh. these um, documents, these exercises for people, but it created a workbook that expanded into this board that people can uh -huh. um, pick cards with questions and sort of go within to answer these questions and also uh, bring the group in at the group level or, you know, more than one person who can play it and support. It's a cooperative game. And, and just a, a little piece about that. People make up yeah. organizations and there is a vision and mission statements that all organizations have. But not all the time that people are marching or moving in step with those visions, those vision and, and mission statements, right? So there's yeah. stuff that gets in the way. We come in and we say, and we bring, you know, the whole structure into an open space to have people move around and discover the collective game that they've been playing. And people, I mentioned coughing up the fur ball, so they yeah. actually get clean and clear about the game they've been playing, which wasn't in line with the vision and mission statement. And everybody now has a common language. They have a common purpose, right? Which is to get rid yeah. of the old and bring in the new. You mentioned that organization is a people. And I thought of, well, that's interesting. Sometimes probably the owner is like, okay, my organization doesn't work in the way how I want and ask, could you please coach us? And then you come and then sometimes it's probably might be the work only with the owner or with, you know, an organization doesn't like only the change there might be already bringing the changes into organization. Yeah. And with the four corners, uh, mm -hmm. of fans, coaches, referees, and teammates. We look at it from a systemic perspective, like uh -huh. from the stakeholders. I'll give you a quick example. I was working with a, a public utility down in uh, Richmond, Virginia, and we, they had to, and these were people who worked overnight, uh. half the uh, group. So we brought them in and we just had them to, one, we had to keep them moving so they stay awake. So at what yeah. does a fan look like and how yeah. does a fan look like within this organization? But then later in the afternoon, and we had them to look at sort of cast the net further out, right? So who are the fans of the work that you do? And because it was a wastewater treatment plant, they said, wow, these are the people who enjoy participating on the water that's within this, this city. So they're the people who just in, enjoy the water, the fisher, fishermen, the, the boaters and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. Who are the referees? They are the regulatory folks, right? Might be city mm -hmm. hall. Mm -hmm. So once they brought in those perspectives from down the road or I'll say downstream, if you will, they started to take the pressure off of the immediate supervisors to say, well, we've been complaining about this e piece of equipment, you know, for six months now. And, oh, it's not only the immediate supervisor's responsibility and job or he or her can't get this to us. Uh -huh. It's the 
you know, the system. It's the, you know, the bureaucracy and, and yeah. the money and and that kind of thing that sort uh -huh. of comes to bear on whether you can get a p new piece of equipment or not. So uh -huh. once they got that, it sort of changed their the energy in the room and uh, sort of relieved some of the pressure. Joshua, could you please say your message to the viewers? Yes, I really appreciate you, Anna, for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to share this wonderful gift uh, called the Game Plan for Better Living mm -hmm. uh, process. You know, I really have enjoyed sharing this with my clients and they have, most of my, my um, clients now are second and third generation referrals because they have gotten so much out of it they're now referring this their children to me or a colleague at work or you know a friend family uh -huh. friend or that kind of thing so it's it's time to sort of uh take the the reins off of the game plan and move it out into the world and this is just one of the vehicles that i, I really appreciate being a part of i'm looking forward to your viewers to contact me and let's explore how what game you're playing oh. <laughs> right and uh if you don't like that game well let's choose another game to play thank you so much thank you so much joshua it was such a pleasure i really enjoyed our interview thank you so much guys for watching see you in the next video namaste namaste if you'd like to learn psychodrama online from leading trainers affordably and at your own pace go to actionexplorations.education this is my project to expand access to the best trainers in the world it's my baby. We are working with the leading psychodrama trainers to present pre-recorded programs. The programs will include lecture, cases, and evaluations. There will be a large selection of action exploration subjects. I'm going to add from 5 to 10 modules per month, so the content will be very rich. Namaste.